This is the story of Air India Express Flight 812. On the 22nd of May 2012, a Boeing 737-800 was on its way from Dubai to the South Indian city of Mangalore. Air India Express is a low-cost branch of Air India, the flag carrier of India. With a lot of Indians working in Dubai, the airline is quite popular with people looking to visit their loved ones back home. Today, they'd be flying into Mangalore International Airport. Landing at Mangalore Airport is tricky. Mangalore Airport is what the Indian government describes as a critical airfield. This means that only the captain is allowed to perform takeoffs and landing at this airport. The reason for this being that Mangalore Airport has a tabletop runway, one of only three airports in India with tabletop runways. This makes landings and takeoffs really hard. One small mistake and there's a ravine at the end of the runway. With a runway of a little over 8,000 feet, the airport is much smaller than other small airports in the vicinity, like Calicut International, which is also another critical airfield, Coimbatore International, and Cochin International. On the ground at Dubai, workers were hard at work turning the plane around for its return flight to Mangalore. They fueled the plane and boarded the 160 passengers for today's flight. At 1.06 a.m. local time, the plane took off. The initial climb and cruise were uneventful. The plane came into contact with Mangalore Area Control at 5.32 a.m. Indian Standard Time as it approached waypoint I Gamma. After passing I Gamma, the co-pilot inquired about the type of approach they'd be making. Control replied that they'd be making an ILS DME arc approach. Now at about 130 miles from the airport, the first officer asked permission to descend. But due to separation issues, this request was denied. The plane flew on. Once the plane was at 80 DME, the controller finally gave them clearance to descend to 7,000 feet. They were now at DME 77. Now at 18,400 feet, the controller gives the crew permission to descend to 2,900 feet. The co-pilot asks if he could join the 10 DME arc via radial 336 directly. This would speed up their approach. Throughout the approach, the airplane has been a bit too high, but this didn't bother the crew all that much. They still had a ways to go, and losing some extra altitude shouldn't be that hard of a task. The crew must have been a bit fatigued at this point, as the first officer yawns a bit. The plane was arriving in Mangalore at daybreak, and the timing of the flight can be a bit taxing if you're not used to being awake at this hour. At 5.52 a.m. Indian Standard Time, the plane was handed off from Mangalore Area Control to Air Traffic Control at the airport. ATC asked the pilot to report when they were on the 10 DME arc for the ILS approach onto runway 24. Once on the 10 DME arc, ATC asks the crew to let them know once they were established on the ILS. At this point, the captain realized that the plane was too high and he lowered the landing gear and armed the speed brakes in flight to increase the rate of their descent. They weren't following standard procedure to intercept the ILS. They were twice as high as they needed to be for a safe ILS intercept. It's 6.03 a.m. Indian Standard Time, and the plane is now 2.5 DME from the airport. The radio altimeter calls out 2,500. This was immediately followed by, it's too high, and runway straight down by the first officer. The first officer realizes that things are starting to go wrong. At this point, the captain disengages the autopilot, and he manually increases the rate of descent in an attempt to intercept the localizer. The co-pilot asks, go around? The captain replies with wrong localizer, dot dot dot, glide path. The co-pilot reiterates, go around, unstable. The co-pilot was making it clear as day that he thought that the plane was in danger, but the co-pilot never took any action. In his attempt to intercept the glide slope, the captain has now put the plane into a screeching dive of about 4,000 feet per minute. This prompted automated warnings to blare in the cockpit. The tower had asked the crew to report when they were established on the ILS to runway 24. 
But since ATC had not heard from the plane, they asked the crew if they were indeed established on the ILS. The captain had forcefully prompted the first officer to give a call of affirmative. The ATC tower gave landing clearance thereafter and also indicated winds calm. The plane crossed the threshold of the runway at about 200 feet and at more than 160 knots. A normal landing should have been at 50 feet and 144 knots. The EGPWS warnings still blared and the co-pilot pleads with the captain, Go around, captain. We don't have runway left. However, the captain continued and he set the plane down on the runway 5,200 feet from the threshold of the runway. They only had 2,800 feet of runway remaining. The captain enables full reversers upon touching down, but it's too little, too late. The plane overshoots the runway, including a 90-meter runway and safety area. The wing of the plane clips a localizer and the plane falls into a gorge. No emergency calls had been made by the pilots and since ATC can't see the plane, they ask Flight 812 to backtrack. Once they realized what had happened, fire and rescue services responded in a timely manner, but 152 people and 6 crew members lost their lives. 8 people survived. One of the most important tools an investigator has in an investigation are the black boxes. And in this accident, due to the post-crash fire, the quarters were battered and bruised, but the data was readable. Investigators are shocked by what they hear and also by what they don't hear. In crews, they hear the co-pilot making all the radio callouts for the flight. There's no conversation between the pilots. This is incredibly weird, as most pilots chat among themselves to pass the time. They might talk about the weather ahead or just regular stuff, but here, there was none of that. Instead, the CVR picks up heavy breathing and snoring on the captain's side. The captain was fast asleep. This meant that the captain missed out on many important transmissions, including the approach that they were supposed to take. The co-pilot had to fill the captain in later after he woke up. Even when the captain did wake up, he did not communicate effectively. As the plane grew closer to the airport, the co-pilot asks if he can join the DME ARC approach of runway 12 directly. But there is no approach that allows the pilot to join the DME ARC directly. They'd have to be on a radio and then they'd have to join the approach. As all of this happens, the only sounds made by the captain were breathing noises and the sound of him clearing his throat. As the plane got closer to the airport, the standard operating procedures dictate that the localizer be captured at flaps 5 at an appropriate speed, but the plane only captured the extended center line at flaps 1. At this point, it was way too fast and way too high. The first officer had realized this and gave a call, VRLOC captured in a sing-song manner. As the approach went on, the captain asks for flaps 10 at 5,930 feet at 202 knots, well above the speed limit for extending flaps to 10. The co-pilot asks, 10? And the captain reduces his speed in response to the co-pilot's query. Now, at 7.6 DME, the plane was on the localizer. The captain asks for flaps 15 at 4,630 feet. With the plane still high, the speed breakers were used along with the flaps. At 3 DME from the airport, the plane was still high. They were descending at about 1,000 feet per minute. The captain calls for flaps 40 and calls for the landing checklist, which was done well. Now the first officer tells the captain that they're too high. The captain doesn't budge. At 2 DME, the officer says, runway straight down and the captain realizes that he's too high. Soon afterward, the captain disengages the autopilot and puts the plane into a steep descent. Air India's operating procedures state that if the plane deviates from the prescribed values for a landing, they have to go around. But this captain did nothing. Once the plane was on the ground, the captain set the auto brake to 2. Usually, pilots set the auto brake to level 3 or max at Mangalore International to make sure that the plane stopped in time. Digging through the wreckage, they find the throttles of the plane. 
they noticed that the engines had been almost at max power during the final moments of the flight. Apparently, the captain had tried to go around. Calculations showed that had he not tried to go around, the plane would have stopped in the overshoot area of the runway, but unfortunately, that didn't happen. After having commenced braking, the captain made a grave mistake of stowing thrust reversers and opening full throttles with the intention of going around. Boeing standard operating procedures categorically states that during landing, having selected thrust reversers, these should not be cancelled to initiate another takeoff. Despite such clear instructions, the captain had tried to go around. But why was the captain sleeping in the middle of a flight in the first place? Looking back at both pilots' sleep schedule, they find out that both pilots did have enough time to sleep. The first officer was alert during the flight, and he did make inputs to the captain that would have prevented the disaster. Looking back on the history of the captain, it seems that the captain had taken a long break from his flying duties and had just rejoined the airline. Moreover, the flight was in WOCL, or Window of Circadian Low. It is hard for people to stay awake and be alert between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. Moreover, the captain might have been sick. Talking to his family members, they learned that he had been suffering from a sore throat. It was possible that he might have been suffering from a mild upper respiratory infection. Drowsiness may occur in an individual suffering from fever due to sore throat even without medication. No sedatives were found in the captain's body. When someone's alertness is impaired, they may focus on a minor problem, even if it means making a much more serious problem worse. The captain knew that he was too high on his approach to the runway. He could have just gone around, but instead of that, he was fixated on landing the plane and opted to manually get the plane onto the runway, irrespective of the consequences. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. A big thank you to my lost airplane fan for letting me use his amazing videos on my video. I'll catch you guys next time.